Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Reagan. if you're new here, and today I have a very long, chill, chaotic reading vlog for you. Yeah, remember in my last video when I said that I would get a video up on Wednesday, and it's been like a month and a half now? Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but I did manage to squeeze in filming throughout the month, so you're gonna see everything from book shopping, book hauls, cocktail making, a reading slump, my husband being embarrassing, like everything bookish for the last month and I've been really sick uh, it wasn't you know the pandemic <laughs> that I had but I'm just now getting over it and it's been like 10 days so this video is going up in mid-may so apologies for that but yeah grab a coffee and like fold some laundry or do the dishes or something because we have a lot of fun bookish stuff to cover so yeah let's rewind the clock by the way, I have a bunch of timestamps linked down below so you can just skip through to the content that you want to see at your convenience. So hopefully that helps you out. Hey guys, so it is Thursday afternoon and it kind of feels like the morning to me because I woke up super late, but I am sitting here at my desk because I have a big pile of books that I need to write reviews on for five of them. So I'm pulling on my Goodreads. I need to do the Star Touch Queen and the Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chotsky. I gave four and five stars too. I think I talked about those on my bookstagram, but I haven't done them on Goodreads. And then I also need to do Torch Against the Knights and A Reaper at the Gates. And I like, I'm struggling to remember the individual details for these books, but I'm going to do my best. And I gave them both five stars. So that <laughs> i give them both five stars so yes i need to give reviews to both of these really really great books and then i finished yesterday um the heart of betrayal which is the second book in the remnant chronicles and phew, i'm really struggling with what to give this i'm between like a three and a four star because if like i was enjoying this book but then i don't know uh, it didn't read the, like it didn't reach the level of exceptional that i really had high hopes for it but it's good like i've enjoyed it i really like this book i like this series it's like yeah it's it, it's like eating your favorite dessert like you know you're gonna like it um it has all the things that i love in books but it's a it, okay i have to just write my thoughts out because i have no idea what i'm talking about um oh just want to quickly note this book um i learned about the issues with this author yesterday through bookstagram booktube and twitter i did and i did my own research um some really icky stuff please go do your own research um, i'm not here to tell anyone what they can and cannot read or what they should and shouldn't read um it's totally up to you but i did get this book in january I was very excited to read it um you've seen in my other videos but a lot of icky stuff has gone on with this author that came to light to me yesterday so it's leaving my bookshelf yes i don't want to support icky people <laughs> okay um so just a note on that and then let's also just briefly go through my april tbr while we're here okay so new angle I am reading The Beauty of Darkness, which is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles. I also am in the mood for a springy contemporary, which is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor and Namie. Namie. Laura Taylor and Namie. I always want to say namely. Um, but that is super cute, and it's about this girl who, like, goes to England after she finishes school because she needs to get away, falls in love with a British boy, I don't know, like, my life story, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna like that. I'm going to be buddy reading, um, A Sky Beyond the Storm, which I'm stoked to read this book, like, it's gonna be so good. And I'm also starting two vlogs. I'm going to be starting the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings series, obviously, with The Hobbit, and vlogging this, and reading the, not reading, watching the movies again and i'm going to be finally restarting throne of glass i'm going to start with the assassin's blade when i had my concussion i like basically forgot everything and i only got to book four and this book wasn't published when i was reading or it had just been published when i was in book four so i never read this book first but i'm going to start with this one and see how it goes so yeah i've, I've been putting off throne of glass and the hobbit for a while because I like to get things out of the way so like 
I'll read all these like standalones and trilogies because I'm like oh if I get them out of the way then I'll have like this the brain space and time to read these bigger series that I know are going to take up like a chunk of brain space but if I keep putting them off I'm just never going to start and they're at the top of my list to read this year and it's already April 8th so I need to like just get on it so that's what I'm doing yeah but let's write some reviews It's been like two weeks since I last talked to you and full disclosure, I've just been in a reading slump. I haven't wanted to film anything. I was in the middle of two really good series. I've bought like four books. I've been like living, you know, the book nerd life, but I just haven't been in the mood to film or really read for that matter. Like I've been watching a lot of movies with my husband. So I thought I would just come on quickly and share with you what all I've been up to and do a little mini book haul for you. So yeah, let's uh, show you what I've got. <sighs> okay, let's do a little mini book haul before my husband and I make some pina coladas for today, which I'm so excited about. We just got back from the grocery store to make pina coladas. And okay, the book haul. First thing that I got was the Waterstones exclusive edition of Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. His beautiful purple sprayed edges. It's signed. It has these yellow end papers, which I love. Okay, where's the signature? There it is. I'm using my US edition to read the actual book, but I've been in such a slump and like procrastinating on that book because I don't want it to end that I actually haven't read it. But it is up there and now i have this beautiful addition to add to this collection i really wish that this series in the uk covers came out all in hardback like normally like there's the fairy loot exclusive editions but they're selling for 450 pounds <laughs> on depop and ebay and like i'm not paying that so i hadn't read the series when it came out otherwise i probably would have got those editions but i'm happy to have this just as a special little treat um, we actually got this the first day that we came out of lockdown in the UK, which was last Monday. Yeah, it's been just over a week, so I love this baby. It's, it's so pretty. And then later on in the week, I picked up this little vintage classic. It's Casino Royale. Um, it's the James Bonds. Who actually wrote this? Who is this author? Oh, Ian Fleming. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't know, this is dumb, but I didn't realize that the James Bond series was books before it became a film series. Um, and he loves James Bond and he was having a bad day. So I just picked this up for him. I don't think he'll read it, but he did like it. And I think that he likes to have it like as a collector's piece. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think, <laughs> I mean, I bought it for him. Um, and then... Baby, I'm in the middle of a vlog. I have to update. I was telling them how much you... Stop! You're so annoying. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I also did two pre-orders. I've never pre-ordered before. I, I mean, I've been like in this reading fog for a couple of years but I just never pre-ordered books and I decided to go ahead and do that because I was really afraid that these editions would sell out so I went ahead and grabbed the U.S. edition of the Barnes Noble exclusive edition I should say of what is it Once Upon a Broken Heart <coughs> oh my god <coughs> fine it's not a panorama anyway um i grabbed the barnes and noble exclusive edition of once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber and this is a continuation i believe of her original series carball which is one of my all-time favorite series i'm trying to collect the two other books in the uk covers hardbacks legendary and carball 
and um, I just found out that Carnival had an exclusive edition at Tesco's when it came out in the UK. Obviously, I wasn't here for it, but it's selling online for four hundred pounds. <laughs> it has the top hat on the naked hardback because their different editions have different things on the hardbacks in the UK, and they're really cool. I have the third one signed from Waterstones. Um, but I don't have the first two. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. So I got the pink cover of the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. I think that not only is the cover different, it's pink and not black, but it's signed and there's something else special about it. Um, but I don't know, it, it sold out. <laughs> so I'm so happy I decided to get that. And since Barnes & Noble isn't shipping to the UK, I'm lucky enough that my parents live in the US and I can just have it sent to their house. So then I can pick it up next time I'm there or whatever. And then today I caved and I also pre-ordered the same book from Waterstones in the Waterstones exclusive edition. But as of today, which is April 22nd, I don't know what the cover looks like. It hasn't been released, but I was afraid that since the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition sold out so quickly, that the signed Waterstones edition would also sell out and it's supposed to have a different cover than the US. And I don't even know if I'll be living in this same apartment in September when it comes out. So I actually had it like shipped to Bath. So I'll pick it up in Bath at the Waterstones there. And even if I'm living in like a totally different part of the country, I'll just have to get the train and go to Bath and pick up my book. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. And then another book that I got, um, I actually got from my husband. I got him the new Gucci Mane book. I think he has another one, but this is his latest autobiography. I got it signed. It's really cool. It already came in the mail and my mom sent a little video and it's like shimmery. So that was from Barnes & Noble. So that's in the States and she's coming over to visit this summer. So she'll just like bring that book across for him. And yeah, I, yeah, so I've, I have bought some books um, recently. I just haven't been reading them i don't even know what i want to read right now i'm looking at my shelves <sighs> i want to read everything and at the same time i don't want to read anything you know let's just go look let's just go look okay so i could start this third book in the remnant chronicles the second one was good it wasn't like fantastic i do want to read and finish the series but this is like 700 pages i don't know also, my US edition of Sky Beyond the Storm, I am like nine pages in that. I could start that and finish that series. I could finish Conjuring of Light, the third book in the Darker Shade of Magic series. And I've been this far in since, I don't know, September of 2020. I'm not sure. I, I have no idea. Um, another book like that, similar but different. I've been this far into The Fallen Kingdom's first book since December, and then I went away to America for Christmas and didn't finish it, so yeah, I'll probably have to restart that one. Um, I'm also in the middle of A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. Really, really loved this book when I read it last week, but I've just been in this slump, so I haven't finished it, but I'm about a third of the way done. So yeah, I have a lot of options. And then, okay, this has been calling out to me. The Evening in the Morning. It's the prequel to The Pillars of the Earth. And Ken Follett, or Follett, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. He's really big in the UK, but he's probably big in the US too. I just didn't know about him. And this is massive. And I believe this is like about, um, I think it's Norsemen who come to England. Let's check it out. Ah! Okay, that was that was not good. Please be okay. Please, please be okay. It looks okay. It looks okay. All right, <laughs> let's see what this is about. Okay, it's in the Dark Ages. Yeah, at the dawn of the Middle Age. I'm not even sure, but it takes place 30 years before Pillars of the Earth. And I'm just kind of intrigued by it. Let's see. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing on the hardback, but it's kind of calling to me. I've never read a super big adult historical fiction book like this before, set in that time period. It's kind of the same thing with Wolf Hall. Okay, let's see what's back here. Um, this series, if you can see it, by S.J. Paris. It's the Heresy series. I do want to start that. I'm also interested in this Rapunzel retelling, Golden Braid. Oh my gosh. And then I'm supposed to be starting a buddy read 
with the Assassin's Blade first, the first book, the prequel, in Throne of Glass. I'm supposed to be buddy reading that with two friends on Bookstagram. So what do I want to read today? That's the thing. I don't know. This one's also calling out to me. Cinderella retelling. What do I want to read? What do I want to read? Also Dark Shores. I want to read this one soon. I have the prequel as an ebook. I got it for free when Danielle L. Jensen did her little promotion on um, Instagram. And I have this one and I want to read it, but I also don't want to like spend money on buying the next two books. I mean, yeah, struggle. Same with this one. This is the first book in a trilogy, Roar by Cora Carmack. And I love this cover. I think it's so pretty. But at the same time, there's another two books I'd have to buy. I did find one cheap. I think I found the next one for like £4.50 or something on eBay. So I could get that. But I also, I mean, I just showed you like six books I'm in the middle of. So maybe I should, I don't know, finish those first <laughs> before I get something else. Yeah, okay. Before I even decide what I'm going to read, I want to show you two gifts that I am so grateful that I've been given. I received from my very good friends um, at Pierre Reads on Bookstagram. I am tagging him here so that you can check out his handle. He sent me a book of one of his favorite series of all time, a series that I have not read and I feel a little bit ashamed of the fact I haven't read it. For a long time, I was like it's just too big of a series for me to get into the hype is so big what if i don't like it i i take me a long time to catch up but now i'm just like whatever and he sent me this book and it is clockwork angel by cassandra claire so i think this is the old cover and he was like you need to read this so this is book one and i don't know the series order there are like different trilogies and quartets and whatever books however many books in like different time periods and she wrote them non-chronologically but I know that you can read them chronologically and I think if I read them chronologically then perhaps this book would be the first one I would read but the first one that was published is this book uh City of Bones and this is the new paperback edition my husband got this for me for my birthday I think the year we started dating, so like two years ago, and I started reading this book. I'm sure that you know what this series is about, and I'm just like way behind, and she has like, I don't even know. I would say like 15 books or more in this in this series, um, but I started reading this, and I found it very juvenile. I it, it was, it read almost middle grade. It didn't make sense to me, and then I ended up a couple weeks ago watching Read with Cindy's vlog about it. And it was really funny. And it just like kind of solidified for me that I don't want to read this book. Um, she basically just did a whole spoiler filled funny video. I'll link it down below if you want to watch it. And so I feel like, yeah, I feel like maybe I just need to read a synopsis on the first three. That's what um, Peru's project says. Her name is actually Reagan too. And I follow her videos on Bookstagram and she says that like it's one of her favorite series of all time. But she just says to like read the first three book synopsis online and then move on. So Pierre suggested I start with this book. Pierre, I don't know if I want to read this book. I might read this, just read the synopsis so that I can move on to this one, which is one of your favorites, so that I can read. Um, yes, and speaking of Pierre, I sent him a little gift back today. I sent him Red, White, and Royal Blue. I saw this on his um, Amazon wish list, and it's a book I haven't read, but it takes place in the UK and I think the United States, so you know, it really fit my aesthetic. And so I send it to him. So Pierre, I hope you love it. And that, yeah, drink some tea while you read it and think of me and then chat with me about it. Um, but anyway, I also got my first ever advanced reader's copy. This is Medusa by Rosie Hewlett. And she actually reached out to me on Instagram and asked if she could send me an advanced reader's copy for her books and give back an honest opinion of what I think. And she sent a really sweet card with it. And this little blurb at the top says, Gorgon, killer, monster, victim, survivor, protector. And it is a Medusa retelling. 
So I will read the back of the book for you. And if you want to skip this little synopsis, um, here's the timestamp to jump ahead. But if you want to hear what it's about, it says, you know her name, you know her story, just not the right one. Within the depths of the underworld, the formidable snake-haired Gorian has finally had enough. Tired of being eternally and unjustly brandished, 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 brandished. I didn't know that was a word. Brandished a villain, Medusa has found the courage to face her tragic past and speak out, determined to expose the centuries of lies surrounding her name. Medusa gives unparalleled insight into her cursed life, from her earliest memories and abandonment at birth, right through her tragic and untimely death at the hands of the hero Perseus. Through telling her story, Medusa finally reveals the lost truth behind antiquity's most infamous monster. It says, Medusa breathes a new life into an ancient story and echoes the battle that women throughout millennia have continued to wage, the opportunity to simply be heard. I'm not sure if this is adult or YA. I have no idea. But it is only like 203 pages, 202 pages with the acknowledgement. So very cool. She wrote this in the 2020 UK lockdown. We had like three of them. So I don't know, maybe she wrote this in the first one, but really cool and I'm excited to read this so I could read this today I don't know I just don't know <laughs> I'm just gonna ask Instagram what I should read because I don't know so you can choose let's see hey guys it's been a few days and I just want to do a quick update I didn't end up reading any of the books that I actually asked you guys on Instagram about but that's okay because I got out of my reading slump and I picked up Medusa the arc that I was given by the author and it was so good I like it was so good I read it in two sittings and now I'm out of my slump and I've moved on with mythology and I'm reading Circe by Madeline Miller I think it's Madeline or Madeline Madeline I'm not sure and I'm I don't know a quarter of the way done and I'm loving it and so I'm thinking I'm currently on my way to teach ballet so you know the hair is up um but I'm thinking that I will pop into Waterstones because it's on my way like literally it's a 90 minute 90 minute 90 second walk from my house to get to Waterstones so I'm thinking I will go there and maybe see about getting Troy by Stephen Fry I don't know it's cheaper on Amazon it's like 10 pound and it's 20 pound signed like exclusive in Waterstones do I want to pay the extra 10 pound I don't know and I also want to see about getting a thousand ships. That's another Greek retelling. I think it's about the women within the Troy setting, maybe like a feminist perspective. I'm not sure, but I have like 90 seconds to leave the house. So let's go. Hey guys, so I am back from teaching. It was pouring rain, so I'm just like back in my pajamas doing laundry. But I wanna show you what I ended up getting. I got this book, which is signed by the author, and I'm not sure how to say this. Ari Adne, Arine? I don't know. <laughs> I need to look up how to say this, but it's by Jennifer Saint. Ariadne. 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 Okay, we got it. Ariadne. And look at those shimmery embellishments. It's so pretty. And this was full price, but I'm really happy with how it looks. Like, that's so pretty. And then even the spine has accents on it so I'm happy with that and it's signed I ended up leaving Troy behind because I can get the just like original hardback copy for half the price on Amazon and I only went to Waterstones to see like what the exclusive edition would be like and they didn't have it so I just left that one there and then there was another book um that I will put here I'm not sure what the title is off the top of my head and they did have a Waterstones edition, which I liked, but I didn't find the synopsis intriguing enough to buy that one over this one. This reminds me a lot of 
Circe, which is my current read, like very, uh, I think, female focused. Uh, I've seen online that this is feminist. I'm not sure like what makes something feminist over like, com like compared to, how do I say this? I'm not sure what the difference is between something being feminist and something being uh, female focused. I'm not sure where that line is. I'm just like, I haven't read enough books to be able to distinguish what the difference is, but I've read that this is a fe feminist novel. Um, let me tell you what it's about because I love romance and I love mythology. So it's about this princess, this girl <laughs> whose name I can't say, and she is the daughter of the king of Minos and someone comes to be sacrificed to the Minotaur and I'm currently reading Circe and if I'm correct Circe's sister is the mother of the Minotaur so it's like kind of all making sense in my head of like how this connects but basically um the prince of Athens comes and he's supposed to be sacrificed but our main girl Ariane Denny, whatever her name is, I need to Google it. Uh, she it falls in love with him and is like trying to save him. So that sounds right up my alley. And here is the signed signature. So I'm really excited about this. It's not too long. It's like 388 pages. So not too bad. And mythology, like I find I'm just flying through it because it's very short sentences. Not short sentences. It's very straightforward in its structure there's not a lot of overtly lyrical or atmospheric writing happening uh it's basically telling you the story getting to the point um and because mythology like it's otherworldly right so we could like in a fantasy novel we'd get all the backstory we'd get the descriptions of you know what these palaces look like like how would this golden chariot look flying across the sky we don't get that we're just basically told the chariot flew across the sky and landed in the ocean you know so it's straightforward and you just you know it just goes by really quickly so i'm excited about this one i'll pick it up after after <laughs> i'll pick this one up after i finish circe which i'm a quarter of the way through and then i'm thinking that i'm going to buy troy now on amazon I don't know I like do I deserve it I've been in such a reading slump I have all these books that I planned on getting to in April and it's the end of April and I've only read none of them yeah I've read none of them so do I deserve another book probably not but I don't know we'll see what I decide okay so this is my little book wish list and this is just so much cheaper it's like 16 pound at Waterstone and then 20 pound for the signed edition so I'm tempted to get this one and then I'm tempted to get this as well but I want it to be in hardback because I want my little Greek mythology collection to be in hardback um I could get any of these I mean I want them all I want to read so many things oh my gosh uh okay it's fine we're gonna stick with this one and then i want to get my husband a game so i'm gonna have a browse okay if any of you play video games please tell me what you think of this game i want to get him something new he plays call of duty and loves that but i feel like he's getting bored and he needs something new so he also loves the last of us and i saw this in both lists online like recommending it I don't think he has it. It's kind of expensive. Uh, yeah, 55 pounds. I mean, that's pretty common for games, but um, I don't know. So I'm going to look, keep looking. But if you have any recommendations, Call of Duty and The Last of Us, those are games he loves. And I think he's like wanting to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but he has that one. So I don't know. Just yeah non-bookish things but if i get a treat i'm gonna get him a treat i swore to protect this island with my life never once betraying my cult until today these graphics are so good i'm intrigued i would read this if it was a book Ooh. 
This gives me Poppy War vibes. Oh, and you can see all the <laughs> booktubers that I like to watch. Cindy, Reagan, um, except I think she pronounced her name like Reagan, like with an E. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, oh my gosh, what's her name? Mary, I think it is. Yeah, uh, more to Mary. She does like dark romance racks and then Haley and Bookland and then Jessie um, from Jessie the Reader. And then one of my new favorite ones is Jody, who's from the UK. So you can see like I only watch booktubers. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually don't know pages of Haley. That must just be recommended. But anyway, those are some of my booktube faves. <laughs> Christian and I went to Bristol today, which is a really cool city in the southwest of England, and I have a little book haul. We went to a few charity shops and uh, independent bookstores, and this is what I grabbed. I found these four books from Oxfam, which is a really big uh, charity shop in the UK, and charity shops are basically like thrift stores, but they're for specific charities, so all of the proceeds um, from sales go to those charities. And I found The Kingmaker's Daughter in this Waterstones exclusive edition, and this is one of the few that I'm missing from my Philippa Gregory collection, so I'm gonna add that to the shelf if I can find room. This one is one of my favorite finds. I got the new Kate Moss book called The City of Tears, this was just published like in the last couple of months and it's still in Waterstones like in the brand new uh, just released section and I actually uh, I actually have the first one I got last year at a charity shop so look how pretty they look together I've not read the first one but now I have both so I'm set for that and then this one is really cool I've always been interested in reading this uh, Catwoman Soul Stealer uh, uh, book by Sarah J Mass, and she's one of my favorite authors and I've always been interested in trying it out because Sarah J Mass is my favorite but I'm not really into like superheroes but that's okay it was like two pounds <laughs> so it looks brand new like it's never been read and it's a collector's edition so it comes with this little poster in the back which is fun so i'm really happy about that and then the last one i grabbed from a charity shop is uh dissolution or yeah dissolution by cj sansom and i have three of the other books in this series that i got from charity shops last year before uh, covid hit but i don't have the first one which is this one so i grabbed that that was really cheap and then I have two books. Um, this one I grabbed yesterday, which I showed you, and it's so, so pretty. And what's super cool about this one is that when I was reading Cersei last night, this character and this story came up in the book. And it was like a little mini subplot of what happens in Cersei. So I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> now I can read this and like have a connection um, to what's going on. And I did some research on Wikipedia to like learn more about it. And then the last book I got today, I ordered from Amazon, it came, and it's Troy by Stephen Fry, and this is so pretty. And then the naked hardback matches the dust jacket, still has the like copper foiling, and then the regular edition has the timeline, which I actually prefer to the Waterstones edition because that one just had like a pretty pattern, but the timeline is helpful. <laughs> so I have, um, yeah, this is what I grabbed today. I think I'm gonna put this on my Sarah J Mass shelf. I don't know where it's gonna go. I don't know if there'll be room. We'll see, let's try this. We'll move this around, stack that there, and will this fit? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> this will do for now. But I have all my Sarah J Mass books in England in this little box, and then I have my Aquatar series back in america and then here i have my philippa gregory shelf so i think this Catherine aragon book by Alison weir is gonna have to move i think that the kingmaker's daughter slots in right before the white princess i'm still missing a few there's so many books in this series 
kind of bothers me that the covers don't match like this one in particular but these over here look quite nice so i think that's how it goes it looks so nice i have all philippa gregory now in this cube in the front and then i have my historical fiction and mythology and then you know everything goes to the back i had to move my outlander books here i don't know where i'm gonna put them right now and then I just put my Desolution book behind my Darker Shade of Magic trilogy because I actually have Tombstone and Heartstone. You can see barely right there in hardback. I love to have them on hardback. I love hardbacks. They look so nice on the shelf, but like, I love that. I love, maybe if I make them even, they look even better, but it's just like so smooth. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I would love to just see like a row of just like everything in alignment, you know, <laughs> but one can dream one day, one day. I still need to get to this book this month. Oh my gosh. I am, I'm so far behind on what I plan to read, but that's fine. It's fine. I'm making my second iced coffee of the day because I just want to get some hardcore reading done. I feel like this whole vlog this month has been me like, I have all these books I'm buying and want to read, but like I'm not actually reading any of them, which is true. It's okay to be in a slump. Like I need to give myself some grace with that. But second coffee because I want to get on Cersei. I want to really get it done. I'm making it in one of my husband's six Green Bay Packers vacuum sealed tumblers. It keeps it so cold. I've had to steal one. I need to get one for myself. But look at this. It's this dairy free whipped cream that tastes like dairy. And Christian and I can't have dairy. But like we can have dairy, but it's not good for us. Like we need to stop eating dairy. So we got this and it's so good. And I put it on top of my iced coffee. Like and just do a little bit or a lot. I don't know doesn't matter it makes it feel luxe like I feel like it has the you know luxe factor without the price tag of Starbucks and that's my little cheat for myself so let's go read a book okay guys I have three books to wrap up for this month this is a really small reading month for me just I don't know I just wanted to watch movies and I hauled a lot of books and we had that reading slump so you know it is what it is but the first book that I have is Cersei the last book I read and I gave this book five stars this was really really good it's a really bold retelling of the witch of Aeaea 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 I'm not really quite sure how to say that one but it's basically an intimate review of classic villains and heroes Anyway, it was really, really good. It's beautiful. I can see why this won so many awards. And I'm debating picking up the Song of Achilles. The storyline doesn't seem as, uh, like, drawing to me, but I probably will love it. <laughs> so I just need to pick it up. And then I gave Medusa four stars. This was very good. I feel like this book would be a very good introduction to people who have no idea about Greek mythology and also for people who love feminist stories, uh, maybe feminist nonfiction lovers would like this book. It's very similar to Circe in that it's about a like a known monster, villain, etc. in Greek mythology and basically spinning the story to say, well, like, wait a second, why did she become the way she is? Is this really like is she really bad <laughs> you know I don't know um so anyway it's short it's sweet it's thought-provoking it has morally gray characters it's only like 200 pages I read this in two sittings you can see my full review for this book on Goodreads Instagram and Amazon this was the arc I received from the author and so thank you very much to her for giving me this book I really really enjoyed it and I think right now it is ranking or it was a couple days ago as number eight in mythology books on the Amazon book wish list, like across all of Amazon. Uh, so that's really cool. I'm very excited for her. And then the last book that I read is The Beauty of Darkness. This is book two in the Remnant Chronicles. It's a chunkster. I read I must be so sick still because that's not the book I read. I read the second book in the Remnant Chronicles, The Heart of Betrayal, and the book I'm showing you is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles, and I have not even read that one. That's the one I'm supposed to be reading this month. I, yeah, I need to like get some sleep or something. Sorry. I read this fairly quickly, though I'd say, and I gave this book three stars. I liked the fact that 
we went away a little bit from the classic fairy tale-esque feeling to the book and this is more grim and dark and there's a lot of uh, religious fantasy in this which I didn't particularly enjoy so much but then by the end of the book it was becoming a little bit more interesting to me and I do like our main character I kind of wanted her to be with the guy that she doesn't like but you know it is what it is <laughs> and we'll see where this book finishes off in book three so I'm supposed to be reading that this month and I have not done that so those were the three books I read in April, and I have five, 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 five that I really want to get to this May, but it's already May 17th, and I haven't read any, so. If you've made it this far in this vlog, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and let me know if you'd like to see more just really relaxed reading vlogs like this in the future. I am filming some content potentially for one this May, and we'll put it out in the next couple of weeks, obviously when the month finishes. I have a ton of new books to haul and share with you guys, so hopefully I will be uploading new content very soon for you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I I will see you in the next video. Bye.